Good evening, everyone. I always turn this on just a little bit early so as, so as to prepare myself. And I'm thankful for those of you that join me three days a week, Sunday at 8 and Wednesday at 6 and Friday at 6. And I hope to share some things with you today that even I don't hear talked nor even preach because of who these individuals are. But let me pray. Eternal God, my Heavenly Father, is again I come to you in the name of Jesus, asking forgiveness for all my sins, but out all my transgressions, that I may be presented faultless before you. I realize of myself and in myself I can do nothing but I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me because you have imputed to me your righteousness I thank you for that and father give me clarity of speech give me understanding of your word that it might rightly divide the word of truth I never want to lean to my own understanding this word of God is rich and powerful and Father, it will save the lost. Again, take me out of self, hide me behind the cross of Calvary, and let no flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Good evening, Sister Brenda. You and you, your faithful self. <laughs> I'm thankful always that you join me and and helping me spread this word to teach. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, there, there are others, I've got word today that others have been listening even though they don't put their names out there and I'm, I'm thankful for that because this word is supposed to go into all the world and I can't do it by myself. You know, I, you know, by you helping me, we can win more to Christ. We are going to, we're still in Genesis and we will be for quite some time because it's a tremendous book, a book of, of history of Israel. And there are folk that we neglect to study because we will glean through gen genealogies because of, <laughs> cause, <laughs> cause of all these names. Uh, I have a spiritual daughter watching me. Thank you for joining me, Miss LaRonda. Uh, she is a powerful woman of God too. She's very studious and she will ask questions that I wish y'all would ask. If you have questions, please, please ask them. And if I don't have the answer, but by the time I come on again, I will have the answer. Or either I will, will send it to you in your messenger because none of us know it all. I, I thank God for what I do know, but I'm still growing in grace and knowledge. We, uh, let's look uh, in, uh, we're in chapter 10 and we talked about some of this last week uh, about the uh, Noah had three sons that were born. Well, well, Noah had three sons that were was aboard the ark, but the three sons had uh, sons that were born after the flood. And it doesn't go into detail about uh, Japheth and Ham having daughters, even though they, even though they they did, but. Uh, we we want to to look basically at Shem because he is an important figure, or there will be no Israel. But but by when by uh, Ham and Japheth, the Isles of the Gentiles. That, that's that's where the Gentiles came from, and uh, their own in their own tongue, their families and nations. And we talked about Ham and and what he really produced. You know the the giants and the uh, sodomites and uh, the actually uh, 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 
the foot is, is uh, what well, P H U T. I don't know how to pronounce it. And especially one, uh, Cush's son was Nimrod, and we talked about him being the an antichrist, and he, and he's also connected with what we call Easter. He he married Isis, or, or what, what we call Ishtar, and we and from that we you have the pagan festival that that's in, in the churches that we will talk about later on. But uh, but Nimrod stands out because he was the mighty one before the Lord, and that word "before" means instead of God. He would, and when you see that word "mighty," it's the same that was used of of the giants in chapter six, the mighty one. So he he was a a mighty hunter uh, in, instead of God. And we talked about uh, uh, Canaan. What? Well, Ham wasn't cursed, but his son uh, that that had to already have been born because they, there was there were children that were born after the flood and uh, through these uh, three sons of Noah, and uh, we want to to we talked about uh, Japheth and, and Shem, and uh, but let's let's look let's look uh, at verse twenty one in chapter ten. Because that first statement is so important and, and people really miss the importance of it. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Eber. E-B-E-R. Do you know what, what Eber is? Do or, or, you know what Eber became? It became the Hebrews. Can you, can you about see that word in there, Hebrew? He is the father of all the children of Israel, the Hebrews. And and uh, and the brother of Japheth the elder, even to him were children born. You, you see all that? And and I'm not going to go through all that again as we did last week, but but uh, go down to verse twenty five because we're we're talking about the nation of Israel being born and how important Shem was in that in that process, and unto Eber was born two sons. The one, uh, the name of one was Pe 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 I call it Peglig, but it's Peleg. For in the day, in his days, was the earth divided. See that that the earth was was really grouped into one until. Pelek came along, and then the earth became divided, and we'll we'll see we'll see how that happened. For and his brother's name was was uh, Joktan. But let's go. We're going we're going to uh, start today with verse thirty one. It's very important. This to me, this is one of the most important verses in all of Genesis. These are the sons of Shem, after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, after their nations. These are the family. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these, these three, were the nations divided in the earth. After the flood, what did God uh, tell Noah to do? The same thing he he uh, the same same thing he told uh, Adam. You know, replenish the earth. Re remember, replenish the earth. And folk don't uh, take time to think about, it, but actually, uh, Noah made the same mistake that Adam did because both of them uh, ate from the tree. Adam from the the the, tr uh, the tree of good and evil and and uh, <laughs> Noah from the tree that made the grapes and he got drunk. So they both ate from trees. And but by, by Noah's sons you see in after their generations are genes. Let, let's say after their genes. 
in their nations, their nations. By these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. They were divided. They, were, they weren't all in one location, which they were at first. Now, chapter 11, the whole earth, the whole earth was of one language and one speech. They were one. Just look at the word one. One accord. Accord in the one accord in the language, one accord in the speech, and it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there, and that's where they be, they made the, the the biggest mistake of their lives, and they said one to another, "Go to let us." make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick from stone and slime uh, had they for mortar and I want to ask you something before I read the next verse who were they worshipping at that time what happened in the in the previous chapter Nimrod began to be what? A mighty one in the earth. He, he was a, a mighty hunter instead of the Lord. So, so who is causing all of this? Because keep in mind, Nimrod didn't just... Uh, uh, he had a, had a kingdom. The beginning of his kingdom, kingdom was Babel, but there were others. But eight or nine others, uh, Erech, Akkad, Kalna, you, you can read it yourself. Nineveh, where Jonah didn't want to go. Reba. So, this man was actually an antichrist in the earth, and it came to pass as they journeyed, journeyed from the east, that same mindset, they have that same mindset as they journeyed. They didn't forget about Nimrod, and, and they wanted to they want to build. Let us look at verse 4. What two things did they want to build? Let us build us a city. And let us build us a tower. You catch that? Do you catch that? Hey, Donna and my, my goddaughter. Build us what two things? A city. One city, not cities. All them folk want to be in one city and actually are worshiping a tower. Didn't, is that not what Nimrod started? Want to, to build a tower way up? And, and let us build us whose top may reach unto heaven. What, what were they trying to get? Where were they trying to go? The tower may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name. God's nowhere in the picture. You don't even hear the name of God. Because if we don't do this, we'll be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Remember Cain? <laughs> Upon the face of the earth. Okay? God will allow you to, I'll say his permissive will, will allow you to go so far until he's going to interact. What happened in verse 5? And the Lord came down to see two things. What did he come down to see? The city and the tower. I want to see what this city looks like, and I want to see this tower that you're building, which the children of men erected, children of the devil, they erected. I give these folk credit. They were a whole lot more together than some sanctified folk. Because what does it say in verse 6? 
And the people, the Lord said, Behold, this people is one. They're on one accord. They have one language. And this they begin to do. They, they, they've got to start. If they continue, they're going to do exactly what they say. This is just the beginning. And I've got to stop them because if I don't, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. See, it starts in the mind and, and, and then you're going to physically do that thing. They were together. They were going to complete that thing. So, now we see the Father and the Son interacting. Look at verse 7. Go to. Let us go down. The Father and the Son have come down to see what's... And there confound their language. Now, how do I, how do I know that they're getting ready to work? Well, remember when we uh, studied the creation... It was always God, always God, but always God. But when it came to making man, he said, let us make man in our image, after our own likeness. Here he's saying, okay, they've, they've got their stuff together. Come on, Jesus, let's go down. Let's do something about that language. Or they won't understand each other's speech. Because if I was to say to you, je me lève de bonne heure, je me brosse les dents et mes poignets de cheveux, je me vais vite et me rends à la salle à manger, you wouldn't have a clue. I was speaking French. You know, uh, Nadine, you, you remember Miss Charl Miss Charl and I? We didn't have no choice. But if all of them were speaking French, they would continue the process. But what's he going to do? He's going to do something about that language. So the Lord, what? Just like he did with Israel. What has he done with Israel? What has he done with us, the tribe of Judah? He scattered them abroad. He scattered them from where they were. Left, right, north, west, east. He scattered them to the four corners of the earth. See? So the Lord scattered them abroad from from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they stopped building the city. They, they, they left off. They left off building the city. They had in their mind what they were going to do. And God had, it had in his mind what they were not going to do. See, they hadn't consulted the Lord. They said, let us. And they the stuff they were making the, the, the uh, tower out of. Is where we came from. We came from the dust. So we, they said, we're putting ourselves into this. We're going to get the glory out of this. And God said, okay, you've done enough. I'm going to put an end to this. So, now what, how, how, how did I know that Nimrod was involved in this? What does verse 9 say? Therefore is the name of it called, what? Babylon. Go back to the 10th chapter and the 10th verse. What was the beginning of Nimrod's kingdom? Babel. He was in charge of this process. He was provoking these folk. N no one man came up with this idea. Somebody had to start the process and guess who it was? The same thing that's going to happen during the tribulation period. One man was given a crown that I, I taught you in chapter 6. One man is going to be in charge and the others are going to follow. It don't take but one crazy person to, to, to have more crazy people following him and doing the same stupid stuff. So, so, here, so therefore the name of it, therefore is the name of it Babel. Do you realize what's on the end of Bab? E-L. What is E-L? God, they were make, calling themselves building a city to their God, Babel, where Babylonia comes from. Beca because the Lord did confound the language. Ba -ba 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 ba 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 ba
babble, nothing. For, and he confounded the language of all the earth. That's why we have all these different languages now, all over the earth. And from this did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Now, I, I want to, to stop long enough to tell you when the Lord did the scattering, Ham was, the, he, he began Africa, uh, Ethiopia. Shem began Asia, the Middle East, where we came from. All of us didn't come from Africa. And Japheth, Europe. And they had sons, Gomer, Gomer, started Denmark, Germany, Belgium, Great Britain, Wales, and Scotland, scattered. And a son named Magog, which, which is going to come up, that name is going to come up during the tribulation period, Gog and Magog. Gog is, is, is Northern Asia and the, and the Caspian Sea. They've scattered. God is not going to put up with the desires of evil men. He will allow it to go so far and then no further. I told you about his warning to, uh, to Adam that, that, we, that we claim uh, he was talking to Noah, which he wasn't. That 120 years for that, he repented the Lord that he made the man. He created the man. He didn't create but one. And he gave Adam 120 years to get together, or I'm going to do something. And he gives us the same warning. He sends a warning before he sends judgment. So the Lord scattered them. And, and now we're getting to the generations of the genes of Shem. This is our subject, the genes of Shem. Shem, I'm not going to read all these names, was 100 years old. And, and he had his first child. That's in verse 10. I ain't going to try to pronounce it. Our facts had. Two years after the flood. He had this child when uh, Noah was 602 or 603. Noah was still alive. And, and he begat other sons. And, and uh, the son I, that we're going to focus in on uh, is, is actually one of his grandsons because uh, he, he had one named Salah that had Eber, where we get the word the Hebrews. And he lived, what, 403 years and get sons and daughters. And Eber beget Pegleg. And, that, and that's when things were scattered. Now, now let us, let, let me go on, go on this, because this genealogy is very important. I'm not going to go through all of them, but what, but what I'm going to do is start with uh, Nahor. Nahor, the, the senior Nahor, because there's two, the first Nahor, in verse 24. Guess who he was the father of? Well, in verse 24, you'll see. Terah. Terah is what Abraham's father. So this particular Nahor, we call him Nahor the first, was the grandfather of Abraham. So you see what's happening in Shem's generation. You, you, you're seeing the estab establishment of the nation of Israel through one man. And after Nahor beget, beget uh, Terah in verse 25, he beget more sons and daughters. And and uh, he lived a hunt. And, and, and in verse twenty six, this this he had a son named Terah. You see that Terah at age seventy, he beget three sons: Abram, which is Abraham; Nahor the second. You see N Nahor. The first is grandson and Haran. Keep those names in your head. Abram, Abraham, 
Nahor and Haran because there's some messed up stuff getting ready to happen. Some messed up stuff, I'm telling you. Now these are these are his generations of terror. Terror begat Abram in verse 27, Abram, Nahor, and Haran, and Haran beget beget Lot. So Abraham's brother, Haran, beget Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Write this down because it's going to get worse. Haran, Abraham's brother, had a son named Lot. That's Abraham's family, right? And he was the only brother to die. Haran, Haran was the only, only brother to die uh, in the land of his father, in the land of Ur of the Chaldees, which became Babylon, wh uh, which became Persia, which is now Iran. So he died leaving two sons, right? Haran, Haran, Haran is dead. And Abraham and Nahor, verse 29, underline, took them wives. This, hasn't this happened time and time again? I overlooked it myself. Because when Cain, in Cain's generation, he had a grandson named Lamech. Remember in the fifth chapter of Genesis? He he took, I think it's the fifth chapter, but anyway. I'm sorry, it was it's, it was in the fourth chapter. But he took two wives. Because if you look at at the generation of Cain, you don't see any women in the generation. So what did Lamech do? He took two wives from Adam's generation. The sons of God came to the daughters of men and took two wives. So, no, I'm not, and I'm not going there with this, but I'm going somewhere else. Now, where did they take their wives from? The name of Abraham's wife was Sarah, that, that became Sarah. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of who? Haran, Abraham's brother, which makes her what? Who is Nahor? I mean, who is Milcah? This man... Married his niece. Haran was the daughter of both. I mean, Haran was was the father of Lot and Milcah. You know, Lot has a sister. Well, now you know. That's, that's, that's here in verse twenty nine. I told you, gene genealogy is important. Don't just bypass it. The father. The father of Milcah, see? Lot's sister is Milcah. Now, now, here we go. Nahor married his brother Haran's daughter. He married his niece, Lot's sister. I'm not through, it's, it's going to get better. Abraham married his sister from another mother. Let's go, let's go to Joshua. Uh, was it 20 and 4, Laronda, I believe. Joshua 20 and 4. Because we, over, we overlook it because Abraham gets in trouble when he... When he when Abimelech sees how fine Sarah is, we'll talk about later, at 65 years old, and, <laughs> well, I don't, I don't give it away. But 
what does did I say twenty? Yeah. No, 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 that's not it. I didn't write it down. But in anyway. I'll I'll have to I'll have to find it. I, I I apologize. I usually don't I usually don't do this. But in in that in, in Joshua, I can't remember the, the chapter, but he lets you know that Terah was the father of Sarah by another wife. It, keep in mind that uh, in Ur of the Chaldees, they were heathen. Okay? They were idolatrous. They had many wives. That's that's the reason that God wanted Abraham to get get away from him, but but what what had what had happened was during those times they had nobody else to marry. You can't do that crazy stuff now. I I thought that was Joshua twenty and four. Okay, but maybe not. But anyway. Terah married his, got married to a second woman. And I don't like this term, half sisters, steps it. But anyway, Abraham and Sarah were brothers and sisters by different mothers. Does that make sense? They were brothers and sisters by different mothers. Now, They call Tara. They call her uh, Tara's daughter-in-law, but but that was Tara's Tara's daughter. But let me let me go on. I I should have written that down. I, I apologize for not doing that. But go back to to uh, we're still in Genesis eleven. Tara took Abram, his son. Well, now, now keep in mind, Sarah was barren. She had no child. And Terah, the, the father of Abraham, took Abraham, his son, and Lot, his grandson, and Sarah, his daughter-in-law. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. His, he didn't, he said his son's, his son, Abraham's wife his sons, Abraham's wife. And they went forth with them from the idolatrous land from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan. Now, keep in mind, who did Noah curse? Who did he curse? They were going to a cursed land that God was going to redeem and give them the land. They were going to possess the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran that was named after a terrorist uh, son and they dwelt there. They dwelt there. They, and the days of terror were 205 years and terror died in Haran. It took him till he was 205 when he died. And Abraham was 75 at the time. So it took 130 years for Terah to move out of the picture. Because it's important, chapter 12 really moves into Israel coming to fruition. And the Lord said unto Abram, what did he tell him to do? Get out of your country. 
And from whom and from who else? Your kindred. And from your father's house. Unto the land that I'm going to show you. Are you still with me? And I will make of thee a great nation. Abraham was a Gentile that he was going to make a Jew. Ur of the Chaldees were Gentiles, every last one of them. The Israelites did not exist. He was going to make a nation out of one man. Do you understand where, where we're going with this? The covenant with Noah was to replenish the earth, the whole earth. So how is he going to do it? Through people. And now God chose one out of the three sons to do this. Just like three sons were attributed to, to Adam, but that, that's question number two. But God chose one to continue the seed. Seth. Noah had three sons. But God chose one to continue the seed. Now, now we have Terah that had three sons. But only one was going to continue the process, Abraham. God chose one out of the three of each of these to continue the process. One, not all three. One. God chose one man. And, and what does he say in verse 2? Get, get to underline this because I don't want you to skip over it. I want you to, under, I want you to look at verse 2 and 3 and let's get this thing right for the last time. And I will make of thee out of your out of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make thy name great. Who hadn't heard of Abraham? And you shall be a blessing. You shall be a blessing. I want y'all to get this next verse right for the last time. Repeat after me. Not what you've been saying. No, I know what you've been saying. I will bless them that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. It does not say that. I will bless them that bless thee and I will curse him that curses thee. And in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. He didn't say just Jews. All the families of the earth. We walk by faith. Not by, but I will bless them. When, when folk blessed Abraham, they will be blessed. But there was one individual even now that would try to curse him. And that's the Antichrist. He said him, not them. Him. The Antichrist will be using individuals all through Genesis to stop the seed. And we'll, we'll see how they, that, uh, they tried to stop the seed through Sarah when they got down to Abimelech. I will, he, even the king knew, I'm about to be cursed. I will bless them, all the people that bless you, and I will curse him. They curse you. The only individual that wants to curse Abraham are the spirits of the Antichrist. You say, well, Christ wasn't in the Old Testament. Where, where, where was he? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were made by him. Without him, there's nothing made that is made. I think, G I think God the Father said, let us make man. I think, and I think when he got ready to go down and see the city, let us go down. Yes, Christ is in the Old Testament. So, and the Antichrist has fought him from, the, from before there was Eden all the way up to us right now. So, I will bless them that bless you 
and every individual that raises up his hand against Robert Brown, I'm telling you, you're cursed because I know who has me. I know. There's no doubt in my mind. Folk that bless me are being blessed. Those that curse me, that's between you and God. Every, and not just me. Every anointed child of God, touch not my anointed. He didn't say preacher. My anointed. Every child of God that's a temple of the Holy Ghost is an anointed vessel. It's an, ah, ah, ah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> he said, touch not my anointed. And he added, he, he added, he added us, and do my prophet, those, the, the, the leaders, the preachers, the bishops, the the elders, do my prophet no harm. So, we see what has happened here. Abraham is going to be blessed. I will bless them that bless you and curse what? Him. The Antichrist is already cursed because he's come, uh, coming against every child of God even right now. Now, verse 4 is questionable. Because that, so Ab Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him. But what happened? Is Lot not part of his family? Huh? Let, let's, let's reverse one again. Get thee out of thy country and from thy nephew, uh, kindred, nephew, kin from thy kindred and thy father's house. Verse 4, Abraham departed. He did what the Lord told him. And here comes Tagalong. Family member. Lot. And Ab Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of Haran. And Sarah was 65. A fine Sarah. I'm going to show you how fine. Yeah, I said fine. Ain't nothing wrong with my eyes. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son. The Lord told you, see, if you don't do what the Lord tells you to do, then he's going to have to do it, which he will. I'll show you that. And all their substance that they gathered, Abraham was rich. In those 75 years, he became a rich man. And the souls that they had gotten in Haran, which, which were bond servants. And, and you know about Hagar. Hagar was in the bunch. When, when Sarah couldn't, uh, you know, she was barren from the time she was 65 to, to she was uh, 89, no baby. And we'll talk about that, that later. Well, okay, let me talk about that. Why was she barren? God was protecting her. When folk are too close of kin, it, you don't know what is going to happen as far as the offspring. So the Lord temporarily blocked that birth so he could intervene with a divine miracle. I know you hadn't thought about that. But God purposely allowed her from the time she was 65 until she was 89 to be barren. You understand now? And they went forth into the land of Canaan. Canaan was cursed. Canaan was cursed. But there's going to be a blessing. They're going to have to bless Abraham. And into the land of Canaan they came. And Abram Passed through the land under the place of Shechem, unto the plain of, Mo of, of Moray. And the Canaanite, the Canaanite was then in the land. The Canaanite, they were giants. There were giants in the land, as we'll see later. The Canaanites, I, t I told you, what they produced, Ham produced uh, the Sodomites, he produced giants, and and these Canaanites were in the land. 
they were warriors. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, Underline this word, please. Unto thy seed, singular. Unto one seed will I give the land. He was prophesying about the fact that the Messiah would come through none other than Abraham. Abraham's bosom. And there, when he got that word, what did Abraham, Abraham do? Abraham do. He built an altar unto the Lord who appeared to him. He worshiped. When the Lord spoke to him, he stopped long enough. Hey, Greta, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ignore you. He stopped long enough to worship. When the Lord gives you something, I don't hear no hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I want to hear some praise. I want you to stop. Th Neil, now, this is hard, hard for me. When I get down, it's hard to get back up, but every now and then. But he built an altar. Anytime you see him building an altar in this altar, it's worship. He worshiped. And then he left from there unto a mountain on the east of Bethel. What does Bethel mean? House of bread. Bethlehem. And pitched his tent. And having Bethel on the west and Haon on the east. And what did he do? Here we go again. There he built an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of Jehovah. He prayed. When it says called upon, he's praying. He ain't saying, hey, Jehovah. No, he is praying. He called. When you see him building an altar, he is praying. He's calling Yah. Yah. Jehovah. He called upon the name of the Lord. Okay, in verse 9, here, here we go. He's marching again. He, he journeyed. Now, where had, where had he been? The east. Now, where is he going? Going toward the south. Because, now, in verse 8, what did he do? He removed from the mountain to the east and, and, and then went, went to the west. And where he built the altar. He, what was he doing? He's claiming the land. He journeyed. He journeyed until he went to the south. And there, you don't go through life without some hiccups. And I call them hiccups because, yeah, this always, he got sidetracked in Haran because the Lord told him to leave his family. He had to wait till his daddy died. And now, in verse 10, what happens when everything is going so smooth? What happens? Now, God had promised Abraham something that Abraham forgot about. I will bless them that bless you. But what did Abraham do? There was a famine in the land. And Abraham went down. Anytime, anytime you see Egypt, they go down to Egypt, not up. He went down to Egypt to stay there. For the famine was grievous in the whole land. So he went to Egypt to live for a little while. Who's that sound like? Jesus, and Mary, and Joseph. When, when, Her when the, when the uh, king was trying to kill him, trying to kill every baby two years and younger, where did they go? To Egypt temporarily okay so this is what Abraham did when the famine came and it came to pass when he was come near to enter Egypt I'm going to show you how, he wasn't all that saved he did, he did some stupid stuff too what did he say to Sarah in verse 11 wait, wait a minute I'll let you read it Now I'm going to read it and put it in my own terms. He said to Sarah, his wife, Behold now, baby, you fine. You are fine. Oh, you bless my eyes. You are eye candy, baby. And I know if you're, if you're eye candy to me, if I think you're fine, 
Oh, Lord, I'm in trouble. They going to want you, baby. You got it now? So what did he do? He told a lie. He told a lie. It shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall, shall see thee that they shall, that they shall say, this is, his wife, this is his wife, and they're going to kill, kill me because you know you're fine, baby. They're going to take you. But no, if, 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 if I say you're my wife, they're going to kill me and they're going to take you. The king going to have you and your fine self to himself. Nobody's perfect. Even the father of the nation. First a famine in, in the land. Went down to Egypt. Now telling a lie. Deception. And what did God promise? I will bless them to bless you and curse him. Curse him to curse you. Let me see what happened. The princess also of Pharaoh saw her. Oh man, she fine. 65 and fine. And commended her. So let, 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 let's, take, let's take her. Let, let's take her Pharaoh. Let Pharaoh take a look at her. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And because Sarah was so fine, he took care of Abraham for bringing her there. Look at, look at verse 16. He, did, he entreated Abraham well for this pretty woman. And he had sheep, gave him sheep and oxen and he asses and men servants and maid servants and she asses and camels. Oh, he blessed Abraham. He, oh, oh, anything else you want? What, what else? Anything around here? You see anything else around here you want? You, you, you can have. I just want this woman. What happened? I will bless them that bless you and will curse him even though this Pharaoh was giving these gifts to Abraham. He was being cursed because the Lord plagued what? What did the Lord do in verse 17? He not only plagued Pharaoh, he plagued his house with a great with great plagues because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. And that's why when I counsel, counsel folk and I've got somebody, I tell them, man, that's your wife. You, you, you protect her. Ain't no, ain't no, she don't belong to nobody but you. And, and that's your husband. That's your king. Uh-uh. You tell these little husbands, uh -uh, that's mine. That's mine. So, they was cursed because he was getting ready to unknowingly take another man's wife that he thought was his sister. Abraham was about to get a man killed over a lie. We don't bring this up, do we? Abraham was a liar. He was conniver. And Pharaoh said, Abraham, what, did, what, did, what have you done to me? Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Uh, why did you tell me that that's your sister? So that I might have taken her to be my wife? Do you realize what would have happened, I would have committed adultery because of you and your lying self. And I got plagues on me because of you and your lying self. God, is, I have blessed you. God, God blessed you through me. Now he's cursing me because of you. I will curse him. I curse you. you I've taken your wife and you allowed it. So now, now, what does it say in verse 19? Now, therefore, that's your wife. That's your wife. Take her and get out of my face. Look at verse 19. You, you, see, y'all try to be too cutified to me. Read what it is. Take her. Get out of here. He wasn't in no good mood. 
It was a take her son and y'all go y'all go ahead. Uh uh-uh, uh uh uh. Now. Now. Make haste. Get out of here now. And look at verse twenty. Pharaoh commanded his men concerning Abraham. Commanded him, get him, get him, and they sent him away and his wife and all he had, which was you see in verse sixteen, the sheep, the oxen, the he asses, and men, men servants and maid servants. All that Abraham was blessed. He was blessed. But he went about this in the wrong way. He was a coward. I know y'all won't hear this about Abraham, not, not the father of all, of all nations. Yeah, he, he wasn't righteous yet. We grow in grace and knowledge. Abraham had to too. He knew nothing. He was learning. He had grown up in an idolatrous situation. His, his dad uh, was, an, was an idolater. Yeah, terror was in idolatry. In, in, uh, in, in, in their land, they had different gods. That's, that's why when we get to the place of Abraham getting ready to sacrifice his son, he had no problem doing that. They, they, they sacrificed people and animals and everything else in, in, uh, in Ur. But, but Abraham was grasping faith in the process. Abraham had, Abraham had to learn faith through work. I taught you that about faith. You say, I have faith. Okay, show me your works. Show me your works. Faith without works is dead. God was training Abraham what it is to worship Jehovah and, and was at the same time cleaning him up from mess. Abraham was messy. He was messy. Okay. Uh, so he went down to Egypt, right? He went down. But when God blessed him, what, hap- what happened in, in, in uh, chapter 13, verse 1? Did he, did, he, did he go down? No. He went up out of the stuff. <laughs> he went up out of Egypt. And he went up. His wife went up. All that he had went up. And Lot went with him. Into the south. That's, the, that's where they headed in the first place. They were going south. But they went down to Egypt. Didn't I tell you Abraham was, was rich? We're going to close in about a minute. About two. Abraham was rich when he left Ur, Ur of the Chaldees. But now look, verse, look at the verse 2. Now Abraham was very rich. In cattle. In silver. In gold. And he hadn't even got to even where he was going yet. He hadn't even got there. And keep in mind, he wasn't going on a journey. He was going on journeys, plural. Look, look at verse 3. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel. Didn't, had he already been there? The house, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hate. See, there are times when we have to do our first work over. You remember when I, when I was teaching in Revelation, uh, the church at, at Ephesus, Ephesus was, was the desired one, and it said that one, this one thing I have, you have left, not lost, you left your first love. The only way that we can get right with God is go back where we started, repent, and then get up and, and, and go on the journey. What did, what did he do? He, he went unto the place where his tent had been in the beginning. See that in verse 3? Between the house of bread and Hai. And what, did, what does he call Bethel? In verse 4. Unto the place of the altar. Going back to worship. To pray. At, uh, to the place of the altar where he had made there at the first. He's doing his first works over. First works over. 
you can't just gloss over sin. It requires repentance. He went down to Egypt, but when he came up out of Egypt, he went back to his prayer room. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at first, and there what did Adam, what did Abraham do? He called on the name of the Lord. Write in your Bibles, I'll put you some paper there. He prayed to the Lord. He pray, He was learning the way of Yah, of Jehovah. He prayed to the Lord. And here we go. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, because Abraham was, oh my God. Ah. <laughs> because of Abraham's blessing, what happened to Lot? Look at Lot in verse 5. And Lot also, which went with Abraham, what did he have? Flocks and herds. And tents. He was being blessed because of Abraham. And because he, he was being poured out a blessing, there wasn't room enough to receive, just like tithing. There wasn't enough room. If you don't believe me, look at verse 6. And the land was not able to bear them. It couldn't bear both of them. That they might dwell together. For the, their substance was great. So they, they couldn't dwell together. They couldn't dwell together. Hey, Dick, where is looking for you? They could not dwell together. They were being blessed so much. Blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Blessings were getting in the way of blessings. And what happened? Keep in mind, everybody ain't saved. The people that work for them, they got an attitude. Look at verse 7. 13 and 7. There was strife. There was a fight. There was strife between the herdsmen of Abraham's cattle and the herdsmen of Lot's cattle. And they had another problem. The Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt in the land. Now you got a problem internally and externally. Abraham saw that. We got a problem. Now, what did God tell Abraham to do that he didn't do? What did, he tell, what did he tell Abraham to do? In case you don't remember, go back to chapter 12, verse 1. He said, get out of your country, which he did, out of Ur. Get away from your kindred, which he did not. Lot's his, his nephew. And away from my father's house. Okay? He didn't do it. When you don't do what God says, God's going to fix it so you'll have to do it. So, so go, go, back, to, go back, back to the 13th chapter. What did, what did Abraham say unto Lot in verse 8? Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee and between my husband and thy husband. We're brethren. We're kinfolk. It's not... The whole land before thee. We've been journey. Separate yourself. There you go. Separate yourself. So since you wouldn't, since Abraham didn't do what God told him to do, God fixed it. So Abraham had to tell, had to tell his kinfolk, get out of here. Separate yourself. I pray, get away from me. And if you if you want to go left, go left, and, and I go to the right. Or if you go to the right, I go to the left. Lot and his greedy self. Here he is dealing with an old 75 year old man. Now he's a youngster. And, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plains of Jordan, well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It, it, even as the garden of the Lord, or Egypt, like the land of Egypt, as it come to Zor. And what did Lot, Lot choose? Did he tell his, his uncle to take the, the best part? No. Young folk, young folk will, they'll do it every time. They'll do it every time. Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. Lot journeyed east and separated themselves from one another. And Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, the cursed land. The, and, and, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched, pitched his tent 
toward Sodom. Toward Sodom. And you know what happened there. But the men of Sodom were what? Wicked sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Now I'm going to show you something you probably missed. Did the Lord not promise Abraham the land? Abraham chose all the plain of Jordan. But what did the Lord do in verse 14? The Lord sent Abraham. After that, Lot had separated from him. Hey, Abraham, lift your eyes up. Look from the place where you are. Look to the north. Look to the south. Look to the east. Look to the west. For all the land which thou seest, I'm going to give it to you and they'll see forever. He owned even Lot's little territory. Lot didn't own anything. It was still all Abraham's. Lot was just living on rented land. And said, I will make, make thy seed as the dust of the earth. So if any man can number the dust of the earth, then, then thy seed also shall be numbered. And rise, walk. Walk through the land in the length of it, in the breadth of it. I'm going to give it to you. So Abraham pick, picked up his tent, came and dwelt in the, in the plain of Mamre, of Mamre, which is in Hebron. And what he do? Worship. Build an altar to the Lord. That's all I have to say for tonight. But genealogy is, is, is very important from Shem. It led us to none other than Abraham. If it hadn't been for Shem, there would be no Abraham. And now we're getting ready to see how God is going to bless the whole world through one man, Abraham, that we'll talk about next, next uh, Friday. I thank y'all for listening, and I, I, I finally got my own book that, <laughs> that I wrote. I, I forgot some of the stuff that I even wrote that, that after 12 years. Those of those you can get, I, I, I believe that you're be very interested and, and you, will, you will find there are things that we say that are not true but the word of God speaks for itself eternal God I thank you for this time I thank you for your people I thank you for enabling me to get through this with, without stumbling or falling and, and Father I want you to remember remember Lord the Hayes family the Bryson family which is my family there have been there have been deaths, the, the uh, Buchanan's, that there's been so many deaths. But God, we're, we're all going that path sooner or later. But Father, uphold the families in your arms. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, Jada, God bless you till I see you Sunday at 8 o'clock. And I'm hoping that uh, you will understand that this is not just for me, this is for you. I'm instructing you on, in things.